when you compose trig functions with their inverses, uh, sometimes some funny things happen. Uh, I'll give you, you two examples here. Um, one of these statements is always true, the other one is not always true. Uh, if you play around enough with your calculator, you'll find that this is the one that always works out. If you take a number between minus 1 and 1, you take its sine inverse, that's going to give you an angle, and then you take the sine of that angle, it's going to give you the, rate, the uh, number that you started with. But this one is not always necessarily true. Uh, you take an angle, you find its sine, and then you take the inverse sine of that number, you won't always get the angle back that you started with. Here are some examples of that. Um, you put in 10, that's what you will get out, and uh, so on and, and so forth. And this video is going to attempt to explain to you why, why that is. Uh, ones that are the same are this and this. Now why should these ones be the same? You can get a, um, uh, the explanation for it lies in the, in the geometry of the situation. If you look at the angles that were the same, um, you might think, okay, angles in the first quadrant are safe and angles in the fourth quadrant are safe. But that's not exactly true. Because if you do it with the um, two, 290, you said over here, if you take the um, sine of <coughs> 290 and take the inverse sine of that, you won't get uh, 290 back. It's going to give you minus 70. What is going on? Um, but actually, if you look at these, all of these angles are in the first or fourth quadrants. They're just between uh, pi over 2. They're trapped inside this region here. Minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's where the, the, they all lie. And that's actually how they all go. Uh, the reason sine inverse of anything is always between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Why is that so? Well, it's so because, well, it's only going to give you one answer, even though many angles have, this, have the same sign. If you do sine inverse of 1 over rad of 2, it's only going to give you back 45 degrees, even though many angles have the same sign as that. To prevent, uh, to kind of get around that inconsistency, it was said that, it was decided that sine was only going to give angles inside this region here, um, sine inverse rather. And you can see why if you think about invertibility and what it means for a function to be invertible. The sine function is invertible on this interval here, right? It passes the horizontal line test for x values between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Hence, when you take the inverse sine of something, the angle that it's going to give you will be the angle that's inside of this region that had the sine of the, of the um, ratio that you put in. For example, uh, you come over here and say, okay, sine of 3 fourths pi. If you draw that out, <coughs> when you put in 3 pi over, over 4, which is out here, it's going to return to you the angle in this region that has the same sign as that angle. And in this case, that angle is pi over 4, so that's what you're going to get out. Sine of 300. Again, draw out a, a, a picture, say 300 degrees, winds up 60 degrees shy of there. So it, what happens when you take uh, the sine inverse of the, the sine of 300? Well, it's going to give you the angle in this region that has the same sine as the one that you had originally put in. So it's going to give you minus 60 degrees. Sine of minus pi uh, is a similar sort of a thing. That would be this angle here. Again, it's going to return. What angle inside uh, between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 has, an, has the same sine? as the um, minus pi, and well, that's going to be zero, because both sines are, are zero. And this one is a little bit tricky. Uh, 11 pi over 17, what exact angle is going to, will that be giving you? Uh, well, it, it depends on the, the quadrant in which it lies. Uh, 11 pi over 17 is more than pi over 2, but it's not quite pi, so it's in here somewhere. The angle that it's going to return to you is going to be the angle in the first quadrant, because sine is positive in both of these quadrants, with a ref with this angle uh, equaling that angle. So the magnitude of the um, angle that it's going to wind up being is going to be pi over 180 minus 11 pi over 17. And that's easy to do. 17 minus 11, that's going to give you 6 pi over 17 back. Uh, 
And that's really all that there is to it. I might also point out that the same exact thing is true with the tangent function. If you look at the invertibility of tangent, it's also invertible from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So in that regard, you could replace all of these problems with uh, all the signs with tangents and all the sine inverses with tan inverses, and the answers will, will come out exactly the same. The difference is cosine. Cosine behaves a little bit uh, same sort of principle, but it doesn't return to you angles between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Because if you look at co the, the cosine wave, you look at that, that's in invertible from 0 to pi. So in that sense, it's only going to return to you angles between 0 and pi. So for example here, uh, cosine inverse of cosine pi over 10. Where does it wind up? Well, pi over 10 is pretty small. That's a pretty small angle. Uh, you take that angle, you take its cosine, get a number, you take, and then when you invert it, it's going to give you that same number back because it's already between 0 and pi. So that will give you pi over 10. Uh, cosine number is a cosine of 270. Oh, 270 degrees all around here. What's cosine inverse going to return to you when you take the cosine of it? Well, the cosine of 270 is 0. Cosine inverse of 0 is the angle in this region that has a cosine of 0. And that's going to be pi over 2. Pi over 2. And finally, the cosine inverse of cosine of 185. 185 degrees winds up here. So which angle inside this region has the same cosine as that angle? Well, it's going to be this angle here with the reference angle of 5 degrees, 175.